Hey guys, it's Casey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you how to build one of the pouring armatures using our sugar structures. Um, this can be used for, there's so many examples of this type of armature on the internet, um, the pouring syrup over waffles, like the pouring milk, milk jug. I'm going to use my paint can example to show you guys, um, but hopefully I'm going to show you from like sketch to building the armature. Uh, this hopefully will be really informative and you guys will really like it. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, I I always like to tell people like you don't have to be able to draw to do this. This is just me, like I like drawing and so I ha always have them. But as long as you have a printer and you can print out the image you wanna do, you can take these steps to design your armature. So this is a pretty simple armature for me, um, but still gonna take my handy dandy tracing paper. If you have a light board, you can use that, but I find tracing paper is usually the easiest thing to use. Um, and you also wanna have a ruler. I've got my little, my wee baby ruler. And so from your sketch or from whatever you're working for, you wanna first draw the line of where your board is gonna be. I always start at the board and I work my way up. And then I've got, you can see here, like there's my main support piece going out to the brush. So that's where I'm gonna put the armature. So from that, board line, which I always try to connect the two ends. Don't worry about the center, so you see it's going from edge to edge. That's the measurement you want. But then I can take this guy here, onto that. I'll draw up to about right there. I'm gonna do a little mark at like the midway point of the paint lid. And then I can move and do another line here. And then knowing that right here, I'm gonna to wanna to do a an angle of some sort to support the brush. That to me looks like a 45 degree angle. And I wanna have another support piece here. And just because depending on what you're making, if you were doing say like a milk jug or something really heavy, you'd wanna have another piece of support at least to hold that on so it won't spin. So that's the risk you run is if it's too heavy and you don't have that proper support, it will spin. So from here, you can see like sketch armature with that little line. So from this little line, I'm gonna make that a coupler piece because I wanna have our food safe pieces inside of what's actually gonna be the cake. But for this long paint trip, I want it to be fairly thin and a longer piece. Since the longest piece we have is six inches, um, you guys are getting to see the, the fun trick that um, the sugar structure actually works with all thread. So we're actually gonna use a piece of all thread to get that distance. So from here, as long as you have a ruler and you can measure these, you can scale this up any size you want to. So for example, from here to here is three inches. If I wanted the cake to be six inches of total height, I would double all my measurements from here. If I wanted it to be seven, I would have to get a calculator and actually do math because I can't do that in my head. But um, so it's usually like two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. You can go up that way. You can also figure out what size cake you need based on all these proportions if you just measure across here. So if I'm doing that measurement right there, you can say, okay, so let's just for, let's say that we're gonna do a three X. So this is three and a quarter inches across. So I know that if I wanted to do this in cake, I would need a nine and three quarter inch cake around. So I would actually just bump that up to 10 and probably shave it down a little bit. Or inversely, you could take it down to nine if you were doing a really thick coat of buttercream, but you know you need it to be at least nine and three quarters inches total. And then from here to the lip, we've got like three and two thirds. Um, and so then you'd know you need to be about 10 and a half tall to get the proportions to match for this. So you can use those measurements all over the place. But once you're here, so we're gonna go ahead and operate like we're doing a, yeah, I'm just gonna play around and figure out what I wanna do. But that is, that's basically how you design your armature and how you size it and decide like what size pieces you need. If you know you need a 60 serving cake, it makes it really easy to like, okay, so 60 servings is roughly like three nine inch cakes. So you know that you can get that size here. That's, that's just the easiest way to figure it out. So there we go, continuing on. All right, so I took a break and did all the measurements to not bore you guys with math on film. Um, but this way you can kind of see like how you size up. I decided to go for a three and a half 
times the size of my sketch um, because of the hardware I have and that way I don't have to cut any all thread which always makes me happy. So I'm looking from first one with our armature we're going from our flange our base piece will be right here and then I'm measuring from here to where I want to put the connect which should be at the bottom of the paint drip. That is three inches in my sketch so when you do it three and a half times larger it's a little over ten and a half um, and I know that with a with our pieces, I'm going to be doing a six inch piece and a four inch piece or a three inch piece. I've, I've got to measure it out. And then I'll have to put another connect in the middle somewhere. So you can kind of play around with the sizes to get you want to get that height here. I'm going to use my all thread to do the paint drip. And I've got, it was three and a half time or three and a half inches on the sketch. So it's going to be 12 inches in real life. I have a 12 inch piece already cut. So that's what I'm going to use. Once again, the reason I'm not even though this is over six inches of height, I don't want to use my all thread here because I'd have to wrap it. All thread's not food safe and the armature is. So I want to put my sugar structure on the inside. So I'm just going to use the connect, which are the straight pieces, to make that longer. I don't want to do that on the drip because I would have to make my drip thicker and I want to try to keep the drip nice and thin. So moving on, um, this I'm estimating just from the angle is going to be 45 degrees and then a 90 degree angle here. That might change. Um, usually I like to have like 45s and 60s and 30s around just to see which angle I like best. But then once again, from this angle to this angle is an inch and a quarter. That's a little over four inches, so I just reduce that to a four inch piece. Um, and then you've got this piece here, which is an inch, which is gonna be three inches. Usually if you're at like four and a quarter or like 4.3 after you do your um, scaling up, just round to the closest um, inch because the the fittings have a little bit of length to them. So even if this is four inches, probably with both those fittings on it, it'll be about four and a half when we're done. And so then from there, I measured out my base, which I'll need an 18 inch board. Um, you can do round or square, whatever you like. And I measured the width of my cake, which was 11.4 inches. So I would use an 11 inch round cake because after ganache or buttercream and your modeling chocolate, which is what I would use to do the paint can um, as opposed to fondant, you'll end up with um, with that extra like 0.4 inches. So always go a little bit smaller with that. And then um, from here to here, you don't need 10 and a half. I do my cakes in five inch layers. So I'm gonna do two, so I have like a board right here. So I'd have a five inch by 11 inch, a five inch by 11 inch. That extra half inch I'll get from my modeling chocolate to the lip. So that's all the measurements. So you can see as long as you have this. So if I wanted to do it five times larger and have a giant paint can, I already know that you know you've got three inches here. So then this would need to be 15 inches. This would need to be 17 and a half. You just keep doing all that, and that that's universal amongst all armatures. So as long as you can have some sort of sketch that you can take some measurements with, you can learn or you can know what pieces you need for your armature pretty easily. There's always a little bit of guesswork and that's why you wanna have a couple of extra pieces just in case. But especially something like this, that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward and pretty much what it'll be. So we're gonna build some armature next. Let's get started. All right, so now it's time to assemble this armature. I've already gotten my base piece um, drilled into my board where I need it to be. And so um, once I went back with the measurements, I decided to go with two five inch pieces to make up the 10 and a half inches of height that I needed. So before I do anything, I've got my base. I wanna put two of my silicone plugs in the base just to make sure that it stays tight. Shove those guys in there. You always wanna put two, just, just that ensures proper tension when you're building. We'll go ahead and put our first guy in. You can use a wrench if you want to, to get it extra super tight. And then putting in our first connector piece to give us the extra height, our second five inch. And then a second connect piece, because we can't um, screw in all thread to here, uh, you want to actually like connect it. So you'll have to have another female piece to do that, not a male piece. Oh, 
one. This one is rubber. It fell out, guys. So yeah, always be careful. You can tell if the if the silicone piece is has has popped out by accident. Because it'll screw a, it'll like screw on really easily with no tension, and it will go all the way down. There we go. That's better. And then I'll just give that a nice little tightening all the way. So from here, that is about to this point right here is going to be the top of our cake. And so then we're going to do where our paintbrush is going to go. That's why I've got this all thread. So this is, um, I believe it's 3 16 all thread. I'll double check on that for you. But it's the, the yellow tipped all thread. You see, yellow tip. Yellow tip is what goes with this. I remember colors, not numbers. Let me go ahead and screw that guy in because that's going to be the base for our paint can. All right, so there we go. And then moving on, we're gonna put a 45 degree up to act as the base of our brush. And then the longer piece going in first to be the support. This could also be the support for your, for your jug or your syrup can or whatever you wanna do. A lot of people would leave it here I like to put in that very last back piece just because, if, especially if you're doing this out of solid modeling chocolate, that modeling chocolate can get really heavy and on a straight piece it can spin. And that's the worst thing you want to happen is like you're driving your beautiful finished cake and all of a sudden it goes, Nick! that's sadness. So I always put, I call this the insurance piece. The insurance piece goes up top like that. It doesn't have to be super tight. You can go tighter depending on what you're doing. But that, if this was a giant, imagine like, we've got our brush handle right there. Giant brush, this will keep it from spinning because of its own weight. So same thing if you were doing, you could always change the angle of this back piece depending on what you're making. But I always like to do something. This could be really, really short, but it's just something to keep it from spinning. But there you go, there's our, our lovely, pouring anything or dripping something cake frame um, and using the fun fact that all thread, all thread works with our sugar structures. So I hope you guys found this really informative and this kind of gives you some creative. We'll list in the notes the pieces used for this that you can use to make your own kit. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of like the world's your oyster and you can make whatever you want as long as you start with some sort of drawing that you can trace out and do your sizing from. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.